Hello everyone, this is Professor Nelson from Electronics. This time, we're going to talk about IGBT transistors, or insulated gate bipolar transistors. These are the two symbols used for IGBT transistors, which we can see have three terminals, which are gate, emitter, and collector. These transistors work very similarly to MOSFET transistors, meaning the gate needs a voltage signal to operate or control large amounts of current. However, IGBT transistors work more efficiently than MOSFET transistors when it comes to handling large amounts of current at high voltages. Therefore, they are more frequently used in these types of situations. For example, when you want to control a three-phase motor, it's better to use IGBT transistors. For example, here I have six IGBT transistors, which are used to control a three-phase motor. You'll also find them in induction cooktops, power supplies, electronic welding machines, inverter cooling equipment, and many other devices that require controlling a large amount of current at fairly high voltages. As for appearance, you'll find them in different shapes or with different packages. You'll find transistors like this one. Some are much larger. And even with a plastic casing, which is much cheaper. Well, this time we're going to see how these transistors work. How to test them, whether they're in good condition or damaged. Therefore, I invite you to stay until the end of the video to learn all this. And without further ado, let's continue with the video. Very well. Now we're going to check the status of our transistors and confirm the presence of this diode. This diode is a protection diode against reverse peak voltages, which could damage our transistors. However, not all transistors have a protection diode. There are some that don't. So this time we're going to check if all our transistors have such a protection diode. To do this, we'll set our multimeter to diode. Regarding the pinout, we can see that we have the following pins. Gate, collector, and emitter. And to measure the presence of the diode, we'll connect the emitter to the positive terminal and the collector to the negative terminal. Pin 3 to the positive terminal, and the collector to the negative terminal. And we can see that the diode is there. Now we test another transistor. In this case, it doesn't have a protection diode. In this case, there's the diode. Now remember that IGBT transistors work very similarly to MOSFET transistors. That means if I place a positive lead on the gate and a negative lead on the emitter, in theory, our transistor should activate because a channel will appear between the emitter and collector, which will allow us to take a measurement with the multimeter. However, there are multimeters that cannot activate an IGBT transistor due to the low voltage they can deliver. Therefore, let's check if we can take the measurement with our multimeter. Now, to activate the transistor, we need to place our positive lead on the gate and the negative lead on the emitter. Negative emitter with the gate positive. Now, we place the collector positive 
and we can see that we have no voltage. Now, let's test this one. This one was activated, and as you can see, the multimeter shows that it's activated. To deactivate the transistor, I need to connect the gate to a negative terminal. And the transistor is deactivated. I activate it. And there's the channel. We check another transistor. We connect the emitter to a negative terminal and the gate to a positive terminal. We checked, and this transistor couldn't be activated. As you can see, some transistors can be activated with some multimeters, while others can't. Now, let's check the status of these two transistors, which are supposedly in poor condition. First, between the emitter and collector, negative emitter and positive collector. As you can see, there's a short circuit. Now let's test this one. This one doesn't seem to be damaged. It seems the transistor is activated. To deactivate the transistor, we place a negative terminal on the gate, and we measure again. And nothing, it means there's a defect. Now let's measure between the gate and emitter. Remember, you should never measure between the emitter and the gate. We place a negative terminal on the emitter and a positive terminal on the gate. This one seems to be fine. This one is bad. As you can see, there's a short circuit between the gate and emitter. Both transistors are damaged. However, if your multimeter can't make these measurements, as is the case with some transistors, we'll use another method to verify the good condition of our transistors. So let's move on to that part. Okay, this is the circuit we're going to build to see the status of the transistors, in case your multimeter can't measure or activate them. For this, we'll need a 12 volt power supply, a light bulb, the IGBT transistor, two resistors, and a push button. The operation is as follows. This resistor, or R1 and R2, are working as a voltage divider. At R2, we'll obtain a voltage of approximately 11 volts. This voltage will be used to activate the IGBT transistor so that it functions as a switch and allows all the current to flow to the light bulb. Keep in mind that IGBT transistors require a voltage greater than or equal to 10 volts. It can be 10, 12, or 15 volts at the gate relative to the emitter. IGBT transistors can withstand a maximum voltage of 20 volts at the gate. Therefore, you should never go above 20 volts. There must always be a lower voltage, typically 12 volts or something close to it. When the transistor is activated like a switch, most of the voltage should be across our light bulb. And our transistor should have a voltage typical of the transistor being used. Approximately between 1 volt and 1.8 volts. This will depend greatly on the characteristics of the transistor being used. Now that the operation is well explained, let's build the circuit. Okay, we've finished our circuit, as you can see. We have a resistance of 1 kilo, the push button, the 10 kilo resistor, and the IGBT transistor we're going to test. For this test, we're using a 5 watt light bulb. Now, don't forget that we're going to measure the voltage across the light bulb, meaning we're going to measure how many volts we get across it. And this way, 
we can also determine the transistor's condition. Generally, it should drop to at least 11 volts, or approximately 11 volts. And across the transistor, approximately 1 volt. Pay close attention to the multimeter. We press. And we have almost 11 volts. That way, you can test if your transistor is in good condition. Now, let's test other transistors that are damaged. We de-energize the circuit. We replace the transistor. We energize the circuit. And as you can see, it stays on and can't be turned off. Therefore, this transistor is in bad condition. Let's try another transistor. We energize. We activate. And it doesn't activate. That means this transistor is also damaged, but in a different way. Very well. This is how you can test the condition of your transistors by building this circuit. And this would end the video. And don't forget that if you like the video, a like helps the channel a lot. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.